Hi, I'm Ali. Today I'm going to read you a story called Libby and Alfred's Big Fight. Are you ready to listen? Okay, I'm going to read you the story. Libby and Alfred's Big Fight. That evening, like every evening, Alfred and Libby's mom called, Children, it's time for your bath. I'll run it while you get ready. But that evening, like e every evening, Alfred and Libby were fighting. That evening was worse than other evenings. The children shouted and hit each other. Alfred grabbed Libby's doll and pulled out its hair. Libby threw Alfred's school book in the bathtub. They were too busy fighting that they didn't notice the bath was, o the bat the bath was overfilling. The children just had time to to climb onto Alfred's bed. The water kept rising and ev everything around the around them was floating. Suddenly, the wind window blew open in a terrible storm. Alfred's bed was washed away. Huge, scary waves nearly swallowed the children up. The sky was dark and cold. Lightning flashed and thunder crashed. It's all your fault. I hate you, Alfred, shouted Libby. Alfred threw a pillow right into his sister's head. They clung up to the bed on the Thoe th Sea for several hours. That at last, they landed on a little island. Alfred pushed Lily and she fell head first into the sand. Alfred laughed and ran off, leaving her there on the ground. Libby screamed after him, Go away, Alfred! You're, you're the worst brother in the whole world! Just as Libby stopped speaking, Alfred disappeared. Libby was surprised and looked looked around for him. It felt strange that Alfred was not here. He wasn't in front, in front of her or behind her or hiding in the bushes. So Libby said in a loud voice, Great, good, right, that's, now I can explore this island in peace. And Libby set off, whistling cheerfully. All, all around her was a magic forest with beautiful flowers, juicy strawberries, and a family of rabbits. A pretty butterfly flutters by and baby bird seemed to be chirping just for her. Libby walked on, smiling. She ignored the little voice inside her head that said, Alfred, Alfred, what happened to Alfred? But when the little voice got louder and louder, Alfred, Alfred, what happened to Alfred? Suddenly it got dark. The rabbit family scampered off. The butterflies fluttered away, and it was as if baby birds had never existed. Li Libby felt cold and tired and lonely, but most of all, she was worried. What happened to Alfred? Libby began to cry softly. She was rubbing her eyes to, to wipe up her tears. She and she wiped away the tears. When she saw a cage, Alfred stood inside it, gripping the bars with his hand and sobbing quietly. Libby ran over to the cage. Alfred, Alfred, I'm here. Alfred smiled sadly at his sister. I'll get out of this cage, Libby, but you must run away and find Mom and Dad. There must be a way of opening the cage, asked Libby, shaking the bars. She pulled and pushed furiously, but the cage stayed shut. Libby knelt down on the ground as close to her brother as possible. She grabbed Alfred's hand through the bars and stroked it gently. Alfred wiped a tear from Libby's eyelashes and whispered, I'll be okay, little sister. We are together now. At that very moment, the cage door swung open. Alfred and Libby jumped up and ran away. The ran away through the forest and down to the beach. They pushed the bed out on the water and climbed onto it. Alfred took Libby's hand. They snuggled down together among the pillows until they reached their home safely. The end? Oh no, this is too... No, this is too fast. I'm going to read you one more book. Uh, yeah, that's the great idea. I'm going to read you one more book. Um, one more book. Uh, ah. Okay, I'm going to read you one more book called The Stonecutter's Tale. Are you ready to listen? Okay, I'm going to read you this another book. The Stonecutter's Tale. The sun rose up the pretty bill. Martin, the best stonecutter in the land, was already at work. He was making a sculpture of his friend Jan. 
he uh, he took the smallest shells ch to chip lightly at the stone. Gip, 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 gip. Suddenly, the birds went quiet. There was sound of marching footsteps and clanging weapons. Two soldiers stu stood in front of Martin's house. One of them shouted, Hey, Stonecutter, come with us. We have orders to take you to our lord, Archibald Gold. At the castle, Lord Gold told Martin, I want you to build the tallest and most beautiful tower ever seen. A tower that will tower over the land and touch the clouds. Martin said, A tower, but I... I don't have enough good stones, Lord Gold said a wicked smile. I will get you all the stones you need, he said, but you must never ask where they came from, and you must not leave the castle until the work is finished. I said now or get out of my sight forever. Martin could not believe his ears, but this was a chance to show what he could do. He was, after all, the best stone cutter in the land. I accept, said Martin. He wanted to fetch his tools and to tell the John news. She asked him in a shaky voice, Will you be gone alone? As long as it takes to build the biggest tower ever seen. And as Martin said, Mar Martin decidedly, John looked away and said nothing. I, I mean, Jan, Jan looked away and said nothing. Martin, Martin added, uh, Martin, Martin added, I don't want to leave you, Jen, but this tower will be my masterpiece. But I, when I finish, I'm going to move into the village. Everything will be, uh, everything will be as it was better. You'll see. But John ran away in tears. Martin spent days at Lord Go Lord Gold's castle. Every morning, the soldiers brought more cartloads of lovely, smooth stones. Martin wondered where the stones come from, but he had promised never to ask. As he worked, he thought about Jen. He knew she was sad, but he said to himself, She'll forgive me when she sees my work. She'll be proud of me. Slowly, the tower rose up into the sky. A year after a year, a year later, Martin's tower was finished. He looked out across the land and said, "I should be able to see Pretty Bill from up here." He stood on the tiptoe and searched, but couldn't see anything. Pretty Bill had disappeared. Suddenly, Martin understood the stones brought by the soldiers had come from his village. How horrible! Just then, Lord Gold appeared. He said, "Well done, Martin. This is the most beautiful tower in the land." Martin's mouth was dry, but you stole the stones. From the house in my village. Lord Gold laughed. It's your fault. You wanted good stones, Martin, and I got them for you. My soldiers had to chase the people out of your village so they could pull their pull down their houses. Now the villagers all live in the forest. Martin ran away in the castle feeling terrible. He ran and ran until it got dark. The stove got collapsed by a big rock to to catch his breath. I'm a monster, he thought. My village was destroyed so that I could have a good stones. I betrayed my friends. With think without thinking, Martin picked up an strap pedal and tried to hit the rock as fast as hard as he could. Stone chips flew all around him. Martin was in a rage and he wasn't thinking properly. All that night the sound of the stone hitting the rock ran out in the forest. At that, at that, at dawn, Martin stopped. His hands were cut and bruised. Hands were cut. In front of him, there was a rock. Had been was a huge stone knight on the horseback. Boom, 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 boom. The dull thudding noise came from the stone knight, like a heart beating. Boom, 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 boom. A deep voice came to the knight's pretty lips. Greetings, little stone cutter. I've been, I've been looking for you, in this, for years in my dark prison. You freed me, order, and I will obey. Martin was exhausted, but in a small voice, he told the knight his story. The knight helped Martin to climb up behind him, and together they galloped around the castle. The the horse's hooves made a terrible rumbling and the ground trembling. Lord Gold's castle rose out in front of them. The tall tower shone in the morning sky. Martin could see Lord Gold waving his arms around and shouting orders at his soldiers. That tower brought me misery to the 
friend, people in my village, said Martin. It must be destroyed. And the stone knight, and the stone knight destroyed the walls into his sword. He took no notice of the ar arrows raining down on him. Martin sheltered under his friend's shield. In a few minutes, the highest and most beautiful tower in the land crumbled in a cloud of dust. Lord Gold ran away and didn't look back. His soldiers threw around their bows and surrendered. Martin said, Stone Knight, we have one more thing to do. Martin and the Stone, Stone Knight went to the forest to find the people of Prettyville. Lord Gold's soldiers rebuilt the village house with stones from the tower. When life returned to normal in the village, Martin and Jen were, was, were friends again. Martin put his arms around Jen. Forgive me, I didn't like it through. Jen smiled. It's true, you weren't thinking and I was angry with you. When you came back, I always knew you were the best stone cutter in the land. Anyway, the end. Okay, and today I read you a story called... Uh, I'm going, I read you two books. Well, one book's name was... Libby and Alfred's Big Fight, and another book was The Stone Cutter's Tale. Okay. And thank you for seeing this video. Bye!